This is how I caught my first big bass of spring. Going into the season, I was very excited, but there's also an element of anxiety and fear. Fear that I wouldn't be able to accomplish what I was able to do last season. I spent a lot of time thinking about my methods and my tactics and reminding myself that these tactics and methods never change. I was able to catch such big fish last year because I put my time in researching and testing what works best. It wasn't random, but it's hard to convince myself otherwise. see maybe maybe we can get into the 30 inch size this evening like we can get some bass in the mid 30s I'd be super stoked uh, but I'm really not like I'm super happy to be catching bass of that caliber in class and especially as how healthy a bass like that was. Striped bass are anything but random. They are well calculated hunters. From the moment each bass hatches, the odds are stacked against it. In order to make it to adulthood, the striped bass must survive thousands of predators and feed itself with reckless abandonment. It has to survive all of the millions of anglers that are riddling the coastline and it has to do so successfully for up to 20 years. Even though the striped bass might be able to avoid people and predators for a while, there's one thing it won't be able to avoid, its own instinct. I'm a competitive person by nature, and this manifests itself in a constant race against my past self to be better in every phase of the fishing season. This intensity works to my favor, but once I turn it on, I can never turn it off. Every second of every day, the wheels are turning in my head, 
Whenever I see flags flying, I'm constantly thinking about wind direction and where I would be fishing in that exact moment. And even something as simple as a raindrop gets me excited, just knowing at that exact moment the bass would be turning on. I put a lot of pressure on myself to perform at the level that I know I can, but it's a lot easier to talk about catching big fish than it actually is to do it. The more I talk about catching these fish, the more doubt creeps in. What if I can't pull it off again? The past experiences seem more and more like dreams. I went into the season carrying these fears, which was reflected in my fishing. I was monster hunting. All I wanted to do was catch the first big bass of the season. I was using 10 inch pencil poppers and glide baits, even though I knew that most of these bass would never go after something that big. Are you really gonna want that? So the thing is, you can fish plugs for big striped bass and plugs work, you know? Uh, you can fish eels for big striped bass and eels will work better than anything else, especially live ones. Now, when we go into more live eels, there's a lot that goes into the care of the live eel. You have to pretty much baby it to get it, you know, to last through a few days uh, to when you're actually gonna end up fishing it. So kind of the best out of both worlds between plugs and eels is the rig deal, because you're able to cast a rig deal and you don't have to worry about the eel wrapping and tangling up your line and you don't have to worry about keeping the eels alive, but then you also have the catchability that the eels have uh, by being able to literally catch bass, well, the biggest bass you've ever, you know? They can just catch just giant, giant fish. And that's such a, a positive that that's why we fish with them. They're such a pain in the ass. It is a pain in the ass to rig an eel, but at the end of the day, it's worth rigging an eel to not have to go through the effort of keeping them alive for days, even weeks. And also I fish, what I like to do is I like to fish live eels. And then when I'm not fishing, when the eels die, if I don't end or they get eaten by a bass, if I, if they come in and I can, and they're dead and I have them, then I'm gonna save them, put them in the freezer, I'm gonna take them out and rig them whenever I want, and then I have this, a beautiful rigged eel right here, and I can fish this guy, I just thawed him out and I rigged him, and I, now I can, I'm gonna fish him tonight, and I have the possibility of catching a 35-inch bass on it. So, uh, especially in the spring, 
Uh, I mean, you know, you want to go big, so because you want to get those bigger fish and get the attention of them. But uh, you know, we are still very early in the season, so who knows? This might be a little bit overkill for this time of the year. But uh, you know, we're gonna have to. They can, you know, these fish or these eels, especially the rigged eels, will catch 40 pound bass in July. So uh, in really early, you know, May, and early, or well, late May and early June, this is kind of around the time I want to be throwing these guys um, for just the bigger bass that are in the area. Kind of the very, very basic, the, the at the most basic level, I rigged these uh, by, using uh, like 50 pound Dacron line, so or just like thicker 50 pound line. Um, and I, I double it, I put him, I put the, I tie to a hook, and I put the, uh, the hook through the vent of the eel, then I tie it to another hook up here, I sew it in with rigging floss, tie it all together to secure the hooks, and you can catch dozens and dozens of bass on it on the same eel and the eel won't fall apart and you can i mean you fish you can fish it like a plug you know and you don't have to worry about running out of eels you can just keep fishing the same rig deal all night uh, and that's the beauty of it you know because you can just string them up rig them up and then you can fish one eel all night long uh, and it will produce big big fish every single time it needs to and the, the other thing about rig deals is the profile, people don't give bass enough credit for how big of a food item they'll eat. Uh, bass are notorious in their own right for eating adult bunker, you know, black sea bass, all of that stuff, like all of those fish can be 20 plus inches, you know? And even some eels, you know, you don't wanna be afraid of throwing the biggest eel you can find. Uh, this is a bigger eel, it's not massive, but you can be throwing 24 inch eels and you can catch big fish. In fact, I've even done it with a 24 inch eel. I ended up catching a 45 inch bass on it. So it just shows you that, yeah, you might get less hits, but big fish are not afraid to eat big prey items. In fact, they prefer to eat big prey items. So next time you're offering your prey item to a, a bass, whether it be an eel or a plug, you can keep that in mind where you can throw huge soft plastics and these bass are not gonna have any problem going after them. And you'll even get bass that are, you know, 25 inches on a huge, on an eel that's 24 inches, you know? And those bass, that's how, like, if, if that's how they're, they're, they're so predatory that they'll even try to eat things that are way too big for them. And that, that doesn't go away. When they're giant 45 inch bass and they see a big 28 inch you know, black sea bass to tog or something swimming around, they're gonna smoke that thing. They'll try to eat it. And you can see that if you've ever swam underwater, when, they're, when bass swim by crabs and stuff, even if they're little schoolies, those crabs will go hide. Those little bait fish will run away. Even if they're bigger bait fish, they'll still bail because they know that even that little tiny bass is gonna try to eat that big, big bait. Look at this. This is my little riggy for tonight. <laughs> I gotta, I'm gonna rig some more, but that's a pretty much perfect rig deal right there in my opinion. You can't get much better than that. Um, eels of this size are, in my opinion, the perfect size for a rig deal. Um, they're big, so when they're in the water, you're not gonna be messing around with a lot of schoolies, and if there's some bigger bass around, they're gonna see this bad boy and just slurp it. And these hooks are big and beefy and strong, and they got big barbs, so, you know, if you hook into a big fish, you more than likely not gonna lose it, and it's pretty ridiculous, though. I was laser focused in trying to catch the biggest bass possible. Every time I hooked into a smaller bass, these thoughts flashed across my mind. Is this the one? Time and time again, I found myself holding a schoolie sized bass instead of the 40 pound bass that I was imagining. It's not big, big at all. Uh, well, nice bass on the carbon surf, I guess. 
Damn, I thought that was way bigger than it was. Thoughts of big fish consumed me. I would wake up in a sweat after dreaming about hooking into past big bass. I started seeing them in every swirl of every wave and hearing them crushing bait in every time the waves bounced off a rock. Looking back at my fishing log from the previous year, it showed that I was catching bigger fish earlier than I did the season prior. I had the gut feeling that this season was going to be different. Then we're gonna to go to the first day I caught my first keeper of the season. Uh, I was using a black and purple darter. Um, it was what, June 8th. It was a 30 inch bass. This year it's just been I mean, the quality of bait has been much greater than the year before. Um, the bass in general have just been bigger. Getting high 25s, 28, 27 inches. Yeah, I mean, what is this? This is May, 19th, May 19th. Uh, we got a 27 incher. So I hooked into a bass on the fly rod that was 35 to 40 inches and lost it. Uh, my 20 pound leader snapped. That was May 18th. So that's a much bigger bass and uh, much earlier than I wasn't even beginning to see bass of that caliber the last year this time. With huge schools of Atlantic Menhaden escaping their usual end in trolling nets off the coast of Virginia and large bass close behind them, we are poised to have a season like nothing that I've ever seen in my lifetime. Menhaden. These are small herring-like fish, sometimes called pogies or moss bunkers, which travel and feed together in schools so large they can be spotted by low-flying aircraft. A giant vacuum hose is lowered into the water, and the fish are rapidly pumped aboard into the ship's refrigerated holes. A single setting of the purse seine may net up to 300,000 Manhattan. Now, the federal government has stepped into this controversy. It recently threatened a moratorium on the fishing of Manhattan by Omega back here in the Bay. The Department of Commerce has given Omega until June 17th of this year to come into compliance on its catch limits, or it would have to stop fishing for Manhattan entirely. Live in Virginia Beach, Chris Horn, 10 on your side. This just made my drive for the first big bass of the season even more intense. I spent every available moment fishing, becoming fully in tune with the ocean. The more I fished, the more the ocean became alive. The whole environment became electric as the weather started to change. One day when I woke up and went outside, I immediately got butterflies in my stomach. I knew that day was going to be the day. I had looked at the wind and the tide and everything was perfect. All the doubt that I had felt that prior morning melted away. Watching the hours slowly creep by was torturous. There was a combination of excitement and nervousness that made me feel sick to my stomach. The moment that I had been waiting for all winter long was just a few minutes away. I spent the time tying and retying knots until they were perfect. When the time had come to finally leave, I was shaking in anticipation. The whole car ride, I felt like I was going to battle. As soon as I stepped out of the car and smelled the salt air and heard the waves crashing on the shoreline, all of that nervous anticipation turned into an acute awareness of complete presentness in the moment. Seeing the conditions in that spot reminded me of past victories and turned my anxiety into supreme confidence. All I could think of was casting off those same rocks the previous season and landing my biggest bass of the year. This time it came down to me tricking a bass that spent its whole life avoiding capture in a four foot window. I casted only a few plugs, only producing a rambunctious schoolie. I then put on my rig deal. I casted it out into a little strip of green water. 
in hopes that there would be a big bass sitting under the current. I took a few cranks and a few jerks to the eel to give it some action. I then felt the immense weight of a big bass grabbing onto the eel. I hooked set hard into the bass, only to feel the big head shake and knew that this was the one. Okay. Okay. Oh. Holy shit. That is awesome. What was that? 35 inches. This is a 35 inch bass. It literally had a mark on it. This fish marks the beginning of something, something that cannot be stopped. My drive to catch these bass is at a level that it's never been before, and the season has barely begun. Bring your tire out. Holy crap, this is a big bass. Oh my god! <laughs> 